Hi there, my name is Amy Hibbs and I'm going to demonstrate for you today how to make a paint or simple ink out of plants that you probably have in your garden. So I'll begin by showing you some of my tools. Um, besides the plants, I have some roses from my garden, which are coming out right now. I have a mortar and pestle, some honey. This is really old honey, it doesn't matter, it's just fine. Um, I have a spatula, little stick. I have some pipettes. These are not necessary, but they're really useful. You can get them like 500 at a time online really cheaply. Uh, a strainer, some water, and then these are two secret ingredients. Uh, some people may have this in their pantry. This is alum and it's used as a mordant. This is optional, but it does give some really good effects. Um, this is gum arabic. This is probably the only material in this whole process that's kind of a fine art material. Um, gum arabic is actually the binder that holds watercolors together. So you can find this in art supply stores. Of course, nowadays you can order it online. I do recommend using this. It's, it's kind of worth the time and the expense. Um, if you don't have it, it's totally fine. You can just go ahead and uh, the honey will help. So to begin, I'm gonna take these roses, take them apart a little bit, and remove the petals. Unfortunately, my mortar and pestle is a little bit small. I wish I had a bigger one, but it'll still work. I think though, because it's small, I'm going to chop these before I put them in. This will speed it up. If you're doing this with kids, just make sure you know which of your garden plants are poisonous and which are not. Most, of, most are not, but you never know, so it's best to check. Okay, that's a good start. And I'm gonna put it in here. That's a little um, preview there, the color that's left on the, the board. Okay, I'm gonna take some pipettes and some water. To start with three, see how that goes. <clears throat> All right, this is pretty time consuming, but it's, uh, the traditional way to do it. You can use a blender for this step. Again, you probably want to make sure your plants are not poisonous if you're using your kitchen blender. Um, but this is this is a great way to just get outside and use the natural materials. Kids especially love this, although they do have a shorter attention span. You might have to finish it up. All right, I'm starting to see some juice flying out. Check my t-shirts, okay. Oh yeah, okay. If I were trying to extract every possible drop out of these flower petals, I would go for longer, but I think there's enough here that I can show you what happens. All right, <clears throat> I use these um, Petri dishes to hold my ink, not necessary. I just like them because they're a nice shape and um, it's easy to see what the color is, especially if you set it on white paper. So I'm gonna set my strainer down and pour 
the macerated petals into the strainer. Okay, and now I'm gonna press the juice through the strainer into my Petri dish. Now again, if you wanna make a lot, if you wanna have a satisfying amount, use lots of flowers, lots of petals, and um, really macerate them for a lot longer. You can just go for it, but this is gonna give us a taste. These are red roses that I have growing in my garden. I do not know what they're called, but they're really deep red and they always make this lovely pigment. Okay. Wow, that's not much. Okay. I'm gonna put that in there for a second pass. And put some more water in to try to get it going. For now, so now what I, I have is more like juice than it is paint, right? This is water and it contains some of the juice from the plant and some of the pigment. So next I'm going to add honey, just the tiniest bit. And it's my understanding that honey acts as a preservative, but um, it will also improve the consistency and make it more paint-like. This is especially good if you don't have the gum arabic on hand. Okay, this is clearly not a good stirring thing. Let's see if I can do it with the brush. All right, so there's the honey. And now I'm gonna add the gum arabic. I'm gonna add uh, enough so that there's like a, a nickel or a quarter size drop in the bottom. It might depend on how much liquid you extract. Oh, that was a little more than I expected. That's okay. So there's the gum arabic. It thickens it up. It makes it more of a syrupy consistency or more of a painty consistency. Okay. As it is, this is paint, right? I can use this with my brush. I can make some marks on the paper. Oh, it's really light. Because we put the gum Arabic in, it's gonna stick to the paper Wow, I wish that were darker. Okay, clearly I need to mash it longer. But I wanna show you something first before moving on, which is the alum. So alum is, in this uh, situation, is a mordant, a mordant. And a mordant is something that binds the dye, or in this case, the paint, to the paper. And it also changes the chemistry of the paint and um, in some cases it will change the color of the paint too it's kind of um, chemical magical let me see you need very very little i mean just the smallest you know 20 grains if you've got a very small amount of paint and put it in Let's see if you can see that it's changing the color right in this one spot. And just that small amount will also change, I think, the rest of this. Make it darker, more deep purple. There we go. I honestly don't know what alum is. I don't know what the chemistry is. It seems like a type of salt, but um, 
it certainly behaves like a type of salt in here. It needs to dissolve and be um, stirred to combine with the paint, all right? Oh, it's so light. Slightly darker color. I think that's pretty cool, but you know what? I'm not really satisfied with how deep a color that is. So I think I'm gonna do this again. Hi again. I, um, I did two things differently um, that I wanted to show you because I didn't feel satisfied with how light these colors were. Uh, first thing is I put on my smock. And the second thing is I worked harder at grinding up that rose and I ground up another one too. And um, what I changed when I ground up the second rose is I really cut it up very finely with my knife before I put it in the mortar and pestle. And it took about 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes of work though, I got all of this fabulous pigment and I will repeat my process by adding some honey and some gum arabic. I think that's good. So I'm going to mix this up. This process definitely, uh, how shall we say, rewards patience. Alrighty. So, once again, here is my my paint before I've added a mordant or without the mordant. You might wonder how um, archival these things are, and um, it really varies depending on which plant you use. But I have used these roses now for at least three, if not four years in a row. And I have some samples like this that I've made uh, three years ago, four years ago, that still look really good. I mean, I haven't kept them in direct sunlight, but um, still, it surprises me that they haven't broken down. Here's some alum, gonna go in here. Totally unscientific amount. And there you can see the color change like magic. So cool. It's a deep purple. I'm painting just on a piece of um, watercolor paper. Okay. Interesting. Um, this is my demonstration with roses. Tomorrow I'm going to try another flower that I have never tried to extract pigment from before. I'm going to try using calendula. Um, like I said, you can use anything that's got pigment and even try um, leaves like spinach, for example, makes a great green paint and berries are really rewarding and you don't have to sit there and macerate them for 10 minutes like you do with the rose petals. Okay, so this is the result of our test uh, with the red rose. This is a couple days later and you can see how it's dried. And uh, this is the test that was very light at the time, but it darkened up as it dried. This is the light test with the mordant. This is a darker one, darker one with the mordant. You can see some really cool streaks in there where the alum didn't completely dissolve and it became this almost black purple. It's kind of shiny too, although it's not sticky. It's kind of cool. And then over here, I did some more experimentation. The top one here is calendula, and this is without the mordant, just the flower petals crushed and uh, with a little honey added. And um, this side, I added the mordant. It was really weird. It came out really foamy when I pressed it through the sieve, it was very bizarre. And uh, here's wallflower. Again, a much richer color with the mordant over here with the alum. No alum here, but kind of a nice shine. And this is grapes. Um, 
This is kind of cool, but you can see how shiny it is, like it's wet and it is sticky. So there you go. That's the result of my tests. Good luck, and I hope it turns out well for you.